द कैपिटल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ सन लिमिटेड एज ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वर्स एज अंडर इक्विटी से कैपिटल एन अमाउंट ऑफ एटी लैक्स प्रेफरेंस से कैपिटल ऑफ फोर्टी लैक्स ट्वेल्व परसेंट डिबेंचर्स ऑफ सिक्सटी फोर लैक्स रिजर्व एंड सरप्लस थर्टी टू लैक्स सन लिमिटेड अर्नस अ प्रॉफिट ऑफ थर्टी टू लैक्स एन्युअली on an average before deduction of the income tax which works out to be 35 percentage and interest on debentures normal return on equity shares of the companies similarly placed as 9.6 percent provided a profit after tax covers one fixed interest and second fixed dividend at least for three times capital gearing ratio is 0.75 yield on share is calculated at 50% of the profit distributed and 5% on undistributed profit sun limited has been regularly paying equity dividend at the rate of 8 percentage compute value per equity share of the company that is a question everybody is requested to go through the question please now friends this question is completely different a question in comparison to the questions that we did earlier how this question is different let me explain you see what happens at over here the information is provided to us like this that normal return on equity shares of the companies similarly placed is 9.6% so normally investors require return of 9.6% provided these two conditions should be satisfied the first condition in a simple language is financial charges coverage ratio the way we have something like called interest coverage ratio something like that so we are required to verify that what is the financial charges coverage ratio for this company that is sun limited if at all the financial charges coverage ratio is 3 or more than that then in that case the company's financial position is sound and investors will not be expecting any risk premium from the investment if at all there is a situation that the coverage ratio is less than 3 then in that case the investors will demand a return which is more than 9.6 percentage how to compute the additional required rate of return i just explain that to you in some time but the first thing that say we have to check is that what is the financial charges coverage that is coverage ratio for this company if it is 3 or more than that then in that case no risk premium will be added to 9.6 percentage similarly we will compute the capital gearing ratio that is 0.75 that is what is the capital gearing ratio for this company if it is 0.75 or less than that then in that case the investors will not be expecting any additional return from the security if at all the capital gearing ratio is greater than 0.75 then in that case the investors will once again expect some additional return from the security now how to determine that additional component is yet to be like discussed but the first thing that say we understand is to determine what would be the required rate of return of the investor will it be 9.6% or more than that further in, that is said dear students suppose the coverage ratio is 5 then in that case whether investors required rate of return will fall down the answer is no 
we understand that so the investors required a profit term will be at least 9.6 it may increase but in no case it will fall down similarly capital gearing ratio if it is let us say 0.50 then in that case whether investors required rate of return will fall down the answer is no it will remain at least 9.6 we have to add the risk premium if the investors that is say if at all the company is not meeting with the market barometers or say the market norms this is the first step that say we have to do then further how to do answer that i am going to discuss with you as and when the time comes but this is the first thing that say we are going to do please write down answer for the question first point it has been given that investors required a rate of return is 9.6% provided A. Financial charges coverage ratio is three times or more than that. Full stop. Capital gearing ratio is point seventy five or less than that. Second point. from the given information comma we will compute these ratios comma to determine investors expected rate of return full stop now write down answer for the question working note number 1 calculation of retained earning so friends over here we are required to make the computation of the profit after taxes to financial charges coverage ratio so 32 lakh rupees is provided to us as operating income that is what so we can see is the earning before deduction of the income tax which works out to be 35 percentage and interest on debentures so it is operating income given to us so starting from the operating income to retained earning calculation will be made so over here will make calculation like this earning before interest in taxes 
from that we will deduct the interest you can see that so the information is provided to us regarding 64 lakh rupees of the debentures having rate of interest of 12 percentage so over here 64 lakhs into 12 percentage that comes to 7 lakh 68,000 so EBID minus interest will give EBT minus tax will give EAT minus preference dividend that is less preference dividend that will give us earning available to equity shareholders less equity dividend you can see that the question is providing the information that Sun Limited has been paying regular that is has been regularly paying equity dividend at the rate of 8 percentage and you can see that so the equity share capital is provided as 80 lakhs so over here 80 lakhs into 8 percent that comes to an amount of 9 lakh 60 thousand sorry 6 lakhs 40 thousand so earning available to equity shareholders divided minus equity dividend that will give us the retained earning this is the way we are required to calculate the answer try to complete the table so friends we understand that so the operating income is provided to us an amount of rupees 32 lakhs <clears throat> minus interest 7 lakh 60 thousand 68 thousand that comes to 24 lakh 32 thousand income tax rate is provided to us as 35 percentage so earning after taxes is 65 percentage so that comes to 15 lakh 80,800 then preference capital is provided to us 40 lakhs into 8 percentage That comes to an amount of three lakh twenty thousand. So it is twelve lakh sixty thousand eight hundred. Less equity dividend, six lakh forty thousand. That comes to six two zero eight double zero. This is the way we are required to make the computation of the retainer. Please take an answer. Read an answer. Now friends over here, let us understand and say how to make the calculation of the financial charges coverage ratio. The question says that say the profit after taxes covers fixed interest and fixed dividend at least for three times it means that say, we are required to make the computation of the financial charges coverage ratio for this company so over here we understand that say working note number two calculation of financial charges coverage ratio let us understand that say how to make the calculation of answer see apparently when I read the language of the question it says that profit after taxes should cover the interest and fixed dividend 
fixed dividend means of course the preference dividend this is the literal meaning say of the language of the question but actually over here we are required to modify this formula which i have written profit after taxes covers fixed interest means interest and fixed dividend means preference dividend so this is the language of the question that they have provided however we are required to modify this formula to some extent what we will do friends in the numerator we will add interest why we will add interest let us have a discussion of the same friends we have studied a formula like this interest coverage ratio we know that say this formula is that is say the to compute this ratio the formula is earning before interest and taxes upon interest this is the formula the formula is not like earning before taxes upon interest this is the formula and this is not the formula why because we understand that say we want to know that for the purpose of making payment of interest what amount of the earning that i have that is the reason so the numerator is taken as the operating income before making payment of the interest and i want to know that what is the amount of the i'm sorry what is the number of times that say the interest is covered with the earning which i have that is the reason so the logic is that the numerator should be say without deducting say the value which is there in the denominator that is the logic then we understand that say when we make the computation of the earning per share it is earning available to equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares we understand logically that say the amount of the equity dividend that we pay is not deducted from the numerator in order to make the calculation of earning per share why because the equity dividend is paid to you only that is to equity shareholders so the amount which is have been paid to you only cannot be deducted from the numerator like that say every time we have say some logic so when we are making a, that a calculation of the ratios like this now same is the case which happens over here the question says that say we want to know the financial charges coverage ratio the financial charges is consisting of two components one we understand is the interest and another is what we understand is the preference dividend as far as the payment of the preference dividend is concerned say it is paid out of profit after taxes that's fine however as far as the interest is concerned interest has already been deducted when we are making the calculation of the profit after taxes so since you already have paid the interest and then you want to verify that say for the purpose of making payment of interest do you have the sufficient earning or not it is not going to make a sense what i want to tell you is this listen carefully as interest has already been deducted in calculation of the profit after taxes and interest is the part of the denominator so interest is added to the numerator to verify that what is the number of times the company is able to cover up the financial charges So please write an answer. Profit after taxes is fifteen lakh eighty thousand eight hundred. Plus amount of interest. Amount of interest is seven lakh sixty eight thousand. Divided by amount of interest is seven lakh sixty eight thousand. Plus the amount of the preference dividend it is 3 lakh 20 thousand that is how the answer is calculated so 1580800 plus 7 lakh 68 thousand so 2348800 divided by 7 lakh 68 thousand plus 3 lakh 20 thousand So ten lakh eighty eight thousand.
So the answer comes to 2348800 divided by 10,88,000. So 2.1588 or 2.16 times. Now let us with paragraph. Importantly, in calculation of financial charges or we can say that fixed financial charges coverage ratio comma as interest is part of denominator comma further it has already been deducted in calculation of PAT comma we have added interest to numerator Next, we are required to compute the capital yearly ratio. Let us answer calculation of capital gearing ratio. So, capital gearing ratio will be calculated as debt plus preferential capital divided by equity share capital plus reserves and surplus. This is the way the capital gearing ratio will be found. The debenture is 64 lakhs. So this is 64 lakhs plus preferential capital in that set is 40 lakhs. So plus 40 lakhs divided by equity share capital that is an amount of 80 lakhs and this is 32 lakhs. This is 80 lakhs plus 32 lakhs. This is the way we are required to calculate the answer. Capital gearing ratio is calculated as like the committed sources of finance divided by uncommitted sources of finance. 624 plus 40 that comes to 104 lakh divided by 80 plus 32 that comes to 112 lakhs. 104 upon 112 that comes to 0 0.9286 or we can say it is 0 0.93. That is the capital gearing ratio. The term gearing stands for introduction of the committed sources of finance and capital structure. Gearing or levering stands for introduction of the committed sources of finance in capital structure. Now my question is that what do you think? that investors required rate of return will be 9.6% or more than that. Friends, we understand that over here that both the ratios are unfortunately not meeting with the industry standard because the financial charges coverage ratio should be at least 3 but it is lower than that. So investors expected rate of return will increase. The capital gearing ratio or we can say it is 
nothing else but a kind of extended version of the debt equity ratio. In the market, everybody has 0.75, this company is having more. So again, the investors require it of return will increase. Taking into account the given information, we are required to make the calculation that what would be the required rate of return considering so that, that is say these ratios which are not matching. We understand that so the investors required rate of return will increase. Let us answer for them. We can observe that investors I am sorry, we can observe that both the ratios are not matching with industry standard. Full stop. So, investors required a rate of return. Investors required a rate of return will increase. Full stop. Heading right down. Investors require the rate of return. In the right down, normal. Required rate of return that is 9.6 percent plus risk premium for factor 1. Risk premium for factor 1. Factor 1 stands for so the financial charges coverage ratio. Now you can see it is 2.16, it is less than 3. So friends over here an element of the subjectivity comes. If at all somebody is assuming 0.25, it is acceptable. Somebody is assuming 0.5, it is acceptable. Somebody is assuming 1, fine. Anything is acceptable. The kind of suggested answer which instituted has given is like this. 3 minus 2.16. So difference of that is calculated into 1. So they have added 0.84 percentage. This 0.84 is the difference of the 3 and 2.16. That instead of multiplying with 1, if at all somebody multiplies with 2, is also acceptable. Multiplying with 3 is also acceptable. Multiplying with 0.5 is also acceptable. By anyhow, you are required to increase this required rate of return by a certain percentage. Plus, risk premium for factor 2. In that it is 0.93 is more than 0.75 multiplying with 2. This is what said they have provided suggested answer. However, I strongly believe that say writing any other is also acceptable. So 0.93 less 0.75 that is 0.18 into 2. So they have considered to be added 0.36. Now keeping anything else is also acceptable. 
so 9.6 plus 0.84 plus 0.36 so the overall required rate of return will be 10.8 percentage this is the overall required rate of return so from the security by investor there is a query from a student that sir if at all we make different assumptions then in that case whether our answer will not match with the instituted answer is that okay replying to that question yes it is absolutely okay see we have to understand that say logically that so the institute wants to check our understanding now this is what says something which is subjectively that you have to decide i can correlate the point with something like this if at all you are going for the like uh, to get an insurance then in that case what happens at say there are certain factors based on which so the premium amount is decided suppose i want to take him that is say the term insurance then they will ask me a few questions like this that say do you smoke or not if at all i say that say yes i smoke then in that case say, they will increase the amount of the premium because risk for them increases second they will take that is ask me a question that say do you take alcohol if at all i say yes then in that case say, they increase the premium amount then they ask me that say do you have bp do you have diabetes means what happens at say these are the factors based on which say they increase the premium now all the insurance companies do not have the same rate at which they will increase they have assigned set the different parameters and accordingly they increase say the amount of premium of course everybody will increase but what is the rate at which it will increase will be subjective that is the way we are supposed to consider over here increase in the required rate of return with paragraph right now above required rate of return have been calculated with an element of subjectivity full stop instead of about comma we may add only 0.5 or 0.25 or 1% directly full stop now friends coming to a new point that is this one it has been specified that so the yield on share is calculated at 50% of the profit distributed and 5% of the retained earning that is undistributed profit see in order to determine the price of the security we require certain information like this that what is the expected or what is the required rate of return from the investor point of view second at the same time we require the information that what is exactly the rate at which investor is getting the return both the information are required now what happens at so over here listen carefully what is the rate at which the investors required return is what we have quantified now what is the actual rate at which the investor is getting return is now required to be calculated and for that so this information is relevant the term yield stands for the return so it specifies that so the return on share is calculated as 50% of the profit distributed we can see that so over here the information is given like this that the amount of the equity dividend is 640000 
So over here it has been considered like this. Listen carefully. 6,40,000 into 0.5. So it is 3,20,000 plus 5% of undistributed profit. So 5% of the retained earning. So plus 6,20,800 into 5 percentage. Whole divided by an amount of rupees 80 lakhs. Into 100 for getting answer in percentage though. That is the way we are supposed to calculate that what is the actual rate at which the investor is getting return. This is like an extremely special question wherein what is the rate at which the investor is getting return is required to be computed the way they have provided to us in the example. They have specifically given that say, this is the way you are required to compute that what is the rate at which the investor is getting return. It is 50% of the profit distributed and 5% of the undistributed profit. So taking that into account we are required to compute the return that investor is getting actually. Whatever the rate at which the investor is getting the actual return will be compared with the required rate of return for the purpose of determining the price of the security. Then on heading calculation of actual rate of return to investor. It will be calculated as 50% of equity dividend plus 5% of retained earning. Whole divided by equity share capital into 100. The amount of the equity dividend is focused upon why? Because we are doing this valuation process for equity shareholders. So over here 6,40,000 into 50 percentage plus 5 percent of the retained earning. The amount of the retained earning is 620,800. 620,800 into 5 percentage. Whole divided by equity share capital. What is the amount of the equity share capital? It is 80 lakhs. Into 100 for getting answer in percentage term. This is the way we will make the calculation of the actual return to the investor and that will be useful to compute the price of equity share. There is a question from a student that sir we are why we are not adding the reserves and surplus over here. Giving reply to that question that since the valuation is made only for the equity share capital, only for the equity shares, that is the reason so the return only on the basic amount of the equity investment is considered. Okay. So over here the numerator is 6,40,000 into 5%. That comes to, sorry, 50 percentage. That comes to 3,20,000. Plus 6,20,800 into 5%, 31,040. Whole divided by 80 lakhs into 100. So 3,20,000 plus 31,040 divided by 80 lakhs into 100. That comes to 4.3 double eight percentage. That is the way the actual return will be calculated. Please take the answer. Turn on further. Now friends over here, we can see that say regarding face value of equity share no information is given. So assuming that say the face value of 100 rupees will calculate the answer. Turn on answer. Assuming that
face value of equity share is rupees 100 comma p0 is calculated try to do answer on your own let us see that say how to do answer we understand that say the answer will be found like this calculation of p0 we understand that say the return and price see logically we understand that say if at all the investor is getting the price sorry investor is getting the return as they desire then in that case the price will be equal to the face value so this is 10.8 if at all you get the return of 10.8 percentage the price will be equal to the face value that is 100 rupees we understand that say actually the return to the investor is 4.388 percentage then this is the price so we understand that say if at all the investor is getting the return of 10.8 percentage then investor would be ready to pay the price equal to the face value over here we are giving return less then what would be the price is required to be calculated so we can have a formula like this actual return divided by required rate of return into face value of equity share so what is actual return actual return is 4.388 divided by required rate of return is 10.8 into face value is 100 this is the way we are required to make the calculation of the price of the equity share so 4.388 into 100 divided by 10.8 that comes to 40.63 is the price please write an answer